Hello again, it is Eric Sugar, the CEO of ProServe IT, and welcome to our second Empower keynote. I am super excited this afternoon to introduce my close friend, Justin Spellhawk. Uh, Justin is the Vice President for Global Technology for Social Impact. So he leads all of Microsoft's giving initiatives across the world, around the world. Uh, Justin was a Marine before he was at Microsoft. And uh, again, super excited of Justin here. He's super passionate about giving and helping people improve their lives based on technology. We'll have a great session with Justin and then I'll pop back on with some options for what to do for the rest of the afternoon. Thanks very much and talk soon. My name is Justin Spellhog. I'm the Vice President for the Tech for Social Impact Group here at Microsoft. And welcome uh, to Empower 2021. Uh, it's a real pleasure to be speaking with you today along with Ryan Walter, Andrea Garrison, and beyond our discussion, there are four streams of topics and a rich set of discussions for nonprofit leaders, IT professionals, fundraisers, and marketers. And it's just a fantastic event sponsored by ProServe IT. Thank you uh, for, for inviting me. Today, I'd like to spend a little time framing our approach to supporting the pressing social challenges facing all of us. First, very broadly at the total Microsoft level, and then we'll talk about the nonprofit sector specifically and our deep technology strategy. And I think uh, it goes without saying that the last 12 months have been a challenge for every organization in this meeting, for all of the beneficiaries that you serve. Um, COVID-19, racial inequality, joblessness, increasing rates of poverty, displacement abroad have created challenges at an unprecedented scale. The onslaught of these challenges every single day almost numbs the senses, but the work that so many of you have done to keep shelters open, food banks operational, social services supporting those in need, global aid and support flowing is absolutely incredible. As a technologist, it's been the highlight of my career to see how all of the IT leaders in this audience have responded, and in many cases, made all of the difference in staying operational during this pandemic. If we move to the next slide, there's a light at the end of this tunnel. And really the question is, can we emerge stronger than when we entered to meet the challenges that we're no doubt going to face. Can we raise more money, scale our services efficiently to meet the growth and the needs of beneficiaries? Can we build deep intelligence into our operations to create the step changes that the world needs to see? At Microsoft, we wanna play a part in helping all of us emerge stronger, and that starts with our mission. Our mission is to empower every person and organization on the planet to achieve more. And one of the words I very much focus on is the statement, every. That means every nonprofit, every person you serve, from providing mental health in Denver to supporting the poor in DACA. Our approach must include everyone. If we advance the slide, to, to achieve this, we're really making three broad commitments. One is around supporting inclusive economic opportunity. Inclusive economic opportunity begins with protecting public health. A healthy economy depends on a healthy society. It also means addressing the drastically widening skills and employability gap and the intensified broadband gap which leaves people without access to education, jobs, and opportunity. And I know we all feel that right now. Recently, we announced a commitment to provide 25 million people with the skills they need for in-demand roles, using data to determine the roles and skills needed, providing people with access to curriculum, providing them with certifications and signals to employers to drive hiring. This commitment also encompasses the need to empower our most vulnerable communities, including the 1 billion plus people on the planet with disabilities. 
While Microsoft has long focused on these issues, each of them have been made more critical with COVID-19, demanding that we support an inclusive economic recovery, both for the short and the long term. Moving to the next pillar, protecting fundamental rights. Recent events are shining a bright light on how much work there still is to do to protect the fundamental rights of all people. That's why we're taking steps to address systemic racial injustice and inequity, both within our walls here at Microsoft and in the communities that we serve. It's also why we're helping to protect the integrity of democratic processes and institutions around the world by securing elections, protecting political campaigns from hacking, and very, very importantly, combating disinformation. Finally, we continue to stand up for human rights in our own ecosystem and business and for people across the globe, including helping organizations and communities before, during, and after humanitarian crisis. Through our AI for Humanitarian Action Initiative, as an example, we've been able to use Azure Cognitive Services to automate much of the Carter Center's data classification process that supports their ability to do Syrian war crimes analysis. We're partnering with the UN investigation team where we're using machine vet vision to identify war criminals caught on video. So just a few of the examples of how we're applying our technology in this pillar. The third pillar is committing to a sustainable future. Sustainability will be a defining issue for the decade. A healthy society requires a healthy planet, and that's why Microsoft is leading the way on sustainability in our four focus areas of carbon, ecosystem, waste, and water. We're committed to becoming carbon negative by 2030 and using our technology to protect the world's ecosystem and natural resources and helping address its waste and water challenges. But as important as our own steps are, by far our most important contribution will be coming and helping our customers like you, nonprofits, partners, and other change makers with the technology that you need to create your own solutions and commitments for a more sustainable future. Lastly, we know that none of these goals is achievable if we don't trust the technologies and the companies behind them. And that's why we take very seriously our responsibility to earn the trust of our customers, our employees, the communities we serve, the governments we support with privacy, security, and responsibility. Now, Microsoft Philanthropies is critical to, this, to bringing all of these priorities to life. Um, and our focus is supporting nonprofits and the communities around the world with technology to realize this vision. If you move to the next slide, Really, the Tech for Social Impact team sits within philanthropies, and we're the group that has the amazing charter that we get to work on each and every day to support you with the digital needs that you have, to support the IGO sector with the digital needs that you have, uh, to really move your mission forward. Now, the TSI business model stands alone in the industry. It brings together affordable industry specific solutions and donations, investments in capacity building, that's training, that's enablement, an engine that has activated over 8,500 partners supporting nonprofits, and a social reinvestment model that provides the agility to further accelerate public good initiatives across Microsoft. The ability to bring the best of our commercial and philanthropic worlds together under one business model is unique in the technology industry. Now let's double click from here into our solutions and our innovation strategy and start talking about some technology. So let's move this slide forward if you would. Now, too often I work with nonprofits and you know, before working with nonprofits, many other types of organizations that struggle with their data, data across systems and separate disconnected databases across platforms. 
the time and opportunity costs that it takes to produce a donor report or close the books across the system is challenging. The manual labor, the Excel workbooks, the boxes and boxes of paper, insights are hidden, inefficiencies uh, and efficiencies rather are impossible. And you know that's not on you. That's on us as technology partners really to help solve. Now let's advance the slide. And let's imagine a world where this data is connected, where you're able to seamlessly connect across your organization to improve efficiency, intelligence, and the impact of your operations. Imagine if you had standards and interoperability set in a way where you could share your data with other organizations in your value chain or with beneficiaries seamlessly and at low cost. Enabling this world regardless of technology platform, is at the very heart of our innovation strategy, and it drives how we have defined our innovation principles. Let's go ahead and move to the next slide and look at those principles. At the heart of our principle is the concept that a common data model or CDM, that's the blue corner up in the corner there, is built with and for the sector. The model facilitates integration and uniformity across platform. This, if, by, if, it's a, if it's adopted by our partners and across the sector, it enables interoperability across apps and services. It's built with nonprofit specific schema, tuned to core processes like fundraising and program management that are the lifeblood of your organization. Now, beyond the common data model, we're building towards a unified cloud platform for all nonprofits that brings together finished Microsoft first party solutions, such as fundraising and engagement, which was launched last year. This platform also provides a rich canvas for partners to build and provide last mile innovation on to support customizations that are required for, let's say, health and human services or conservation or global aid. Combined, this forms a complete end-to-end -end platform strategy that really helps organiza organizations accelerate efficiency, security, and what I focused on most, which is ultimately mission impact at the last mile. Now, let's move to the next slide and take a look at the building blocks for this vision, which are of course the underlying Microsoft Cloud capabilities. Microsoft 365, Dynamics 365, Power Platform, Azure. We're gonna now look at how each element uh, is being used and what are the real world examples of impact. And let's start with uh, moving to the next slide and looking at Microsoft 365. Now, many of us have been living each day in this cloud, leveraging Teams and Office apps to do just about everything uh, all day long. Uh, and Microsoft 365 brings together the best of those productivity tools with security tools, and it works beautifully on Windows, iOS, or Android. Now, move to the next slide, and, and I'll highlight an inspiring story for me it's been really inspiring actually to see how all of you have been using Microsoft 365. Um, and this organization, Make-A-Wish, is no exception. Now, Make-A-Wish uh, has been fulfilling the dreams of children who are ser seriously ill for 40 years. And that drive doesn't waver even during a pandemic. As the COVID-19 crisis rolled across the globe, the nonprofit staff, like many of you, were asked to work at home, but find a way to keep children excited about their postponed experiences. Make-A-Wish managed to transition 1,800 staff across 120 offices in the United States and US territories to remote work within one week. With the technology tools to work remotely, communicate to WISH families, and direct as much money as possible to granting wishes, Make-A-Wish is committed to its mission more than it's ever been before, and they've been able to stay operational on that modern work platform. Now, security was especially important to Make-A-Wish. Security with Microsoft 365 and Azure 
including multi-factor authentication, alerts of suspicious activity like phishing, managing user permissions through Intune, uh, and ensuring that Make-A-Wish employed the most up-to-date defenses for every single employee. Let's move to the next slide and talk about the second foundational block, which is Azure. Now, in Microsoft Azure, we have well over 200 products and services. You can see that we've extended Azure to the edge, offering the ability to run application code in the cloud, but also in a seamless, consistent way in the edge through Azure Stack, Azure Sphere, and all the way out to mixed reality experiences. Our holistic offering, offerings span serverless computing, application infrastructure, data and AI, developer tools and services, business processes, productivity, and collaboration, and it's all interconnected. All of this is ring-fenced by a foundation of integrated, comprehensive security and compliance offerings spanning every part of Azure and the Microsoft Cloud. Now, a great example that I've been personally pretty engaged in, if you move to the next slide, is with the WHO. And as you all know, uh, watching the news, the WHO has been at the forefront of trying to respond to the COVID-19 pandemic. And we've been partnering very closely with them, launching a range of projects from helping them implement PPE tracking systems to helping use uh, Azure for machine language translation from status reports coming in all over the globe. Most significant is the Global Health Data Hub that we're jointly building with the WHO and Avanad on Azure, using the power of AI to create a global information center to improve disease surveillance across different infectious diseases, with the priority scenario being COVID-19 and using a unified data model to really ensure that we're understanding the mortality rate that COVID-19 is driving both directly and indirectly, that we're learning from that, analyzing data correctly, and responding effectively, all powered by Azure, underlying Azure services and Azure cognitive services as well. Let's move to the, the next building block, and that's Dynamics 365 and our Power Platform. Here, we have a full left to right suite of modularized solutions to fulfill the operational needs of nonprofits. Managing constituents in Dynamics 365 sales provides a single contact record that supports all of the ways that constituents engage with your organization that integrates with customer insights, donations aligned to programs that align to services that book as transactions in the financial tools. So it's all integrated left to right. If you're a nonprofit that operates real retail outlets like a thrift store, we provide integration with commerce tools as well. With the Power Platform, we're empowering everyone to analyze, act, and automate. You can't stop shadow IT. It's like stopping the tide. As we all know, in a low resource environment, the field always finds a way to build what they need. What they need. And with Power Platform, you can embrace that creativity and trust that will be tied back to your organization's security policies, privacy standards, and data architecture. Now, if you move to the next slide, an example of the innovation in this area that we announced last year um, was a fully finished solution built on this stack called fundraising engagement that is really brought together to help uh, provide a full left to right fundraising and analysis platform to engage and retain donors, drive fundraising efficiencies, get an accurate real time view, uh, compressing reporting that would often take a day or more to a second or a minute, uh, and it's fully aligned uh, with all of the systems. Now to see how this is playing in action, let's go to the next slide. And you know, Right to Play is quite an amazing organization uh, that uh, is supporting the world's most vulnerable children and protecting the world's most vulnerable children using the power of play as a tool. They were an early adopter of this technology. Um, and I'd like to now run a video to, to show you 
how this technology has made an impact in their operation. Let's go ahead and roll the video. Right to Play is committed to a world where every child is safe and free from exploitation and abuse. Our mission is to protect, to educate, and to empower the most vulnerable children in the world using the power of play. And anyone who's been a child knows it's one of the most powerful forces in a child's life. We focus on quality education programs, we focus on child protection, gender equality, and on health and well-being of children. Because of the support of our amazing donors, Right to Play is able to work with over two million children every week. It can be gamified learning, sports, music, art, all different forms of play to engage children and make sure they're fully developing. Our donors and supporters are critical for Right to Play to be able to scale up its program and create impactful transformational change in lives of children. About three years ago, we decided to make a, an investment to acquire new donors. We were increasing our file size from just over 100 donors to well over 3,000 donors a month. And we were handling it manually. It would take an individual a full day of effort to project how much revenue we'd have at any given time. We're helping kids at the end of the day and being able to know how much support you can provide is so important. Most nonprofits today end up compiling and having a huge ecosystem of disparate solutions that don't speak to one another. So resolving that problem and having a holistic 360 degree view of their donors, of their operations, of their data, all of a sudden it's a total game changer. Fundraising and engagement built on Microsoft Dynamics 365 has such a huge impact on our operations. The donor information is imported directly into our system and we're able to do real-time reporting on our revenue and our fundraising efforts. The fundraising and engagement solution has allowed us to massively scale our monthly donor program. It's up over 3,000% and that's only because of this solution. We now have a single system of truth where we can transparently communicate with a broad and international portfolio of donors and to steward them and engage them in ways that we never were able to before. They know exactly where their dollars are going and the impact that it's having. Being transparent with our stakeholders in what are the challenges, what are the successes of the program is critical. It enables us to then in turn build better programs, fundraise more effectively and reach more children around the world. This is an incredibly powerful tool that allows organizations to truly move light years ahead of where they are today, built on that common data model and positioned for the future to grow. Because of fundraising and engagement built on Microsoft Dynamics 365, Right to Play is going to be able to expand the impact of our programs and over the next five to 10 years, expand to many more countries and impact the lives of many more of the world's most vulnerable children. Great. Can we move to the next slide? Thank you. Now, when you bring it all together, this is the summary. This is the mental picture in my mind when I think about our innovation strategy. At the very center of it is the CDM built with and for the sector to facilitate data integration and uniformity across platforms and interoperability across services or apps, whether that's on Microsoft or a competitor's platform, assuming they adopt the CDM. A Microsoft Cloud for all nonprofits is around the next layer, and it's tuned to the most critical scenarios in your operations and drawing on the power of modern work, Azure, Power Platform, and Dynamics to power those processes. We see a world where we're investing in an increasingly rich set of digital skills and enablement services around the edge of that Microsoft Cloud for all nonprofits to ensure that you and your frontline workers have the skills you need to make the most of the solutions on the front line. And all of this is surrounded by a rich ecosystem of innovators building specific mission delivery technologies on our stack to accelerate critical SDG outcomes. From ProServe IT supporting many of you on this call, 
to Pula Kisa, who's a social entrepreneur that built a pack, an IoT Azure based pack to provide remote medicine to Autolung, a citizen development group that's working on a low co cost respirator device for emerging markets. Investing in this community and in the underlying technology is our long term commitment. Now, if I can ask you to move to the final slide here to translate that vision into real impact will take all of us. I love this slide. If you want to go wide, you go with the government. If you want to go deep, you go with an NGO and an academic institution. If you want to go fast, you go with the private sector. But if you want to go far, you must go together. Let's do this together. We're committed at Microsoft. I know you're committed. I know ProServe IT is committed. Forging deep partnerships to address the world's challenges has never been more important. Let's make it happen. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Justin. Uh, very excited to have you. Appreciate your thoughts, your insights, and sharing some of the stories. We apologize for a couple of video hiccups. And again, we look forward to seeing you at the rest of Empower 2020 today. The next session start at 1.10. Please drop by the booths to visit all of our sponsors. These are the people that make this event possible. We thank all of our sponsors. Uh, so yes, drop by the booths, check out some of the fun videos, some of the fun activities in the breakouts. And again, look forward to seeing you in sessions throughout the afternoon. Thank you and have a wonderful Empower 2021.